Let's talk about different ways of viewing and organizing our scene. One of the things that's unique to Blender is that what we see can impact how we select. This hopefully makes some intuitive sense, where if I rotate my viewport all the way around so that it's blocking the camera, I'm not going to be able to select the camera. What's in front is going to be what gets selected. Now the camera doesn't have any geometry, so it's a little bit different than what happens if I have a bunch of objects lined up. So if I take my cube here and I just hit Shift D and make a row of them, just like so, and I rotate my viewport such that there's one in front of all the others. If I left click to select, of course it'll select the one that's closest to me, but if I keep left clicking, it'll cycle through all of them in order of depth. This is a pretty intuitive way to work, and it allows you to select things that are under other objects. Another way to do this is to hold Alt and then left click, and that'll bring up a menu of all of the objects that are under your cursor. That way you can easily select one in the middle if you want to. Now this idea of what you see having an impact on what you select is even more true in edit mode. I'll go ahead and delete my cube copies. Then I'll go into edit mode on the first one. Here, if I deselect everything with Alt A and then box select, it looks like my whole cube is selected, but it didn't get the one in the back. That's because I couldn't see it from that viewpoint. Of course, I can always hit A to select everything, but sometimes I just want to select part of a mesh and select all the way through. Well, for that, we need to turn on X-Ray. That's up in the top right of the 3D view header, and the icon looks like a semi-transparent square on top of another square. Turn that on, and now not only can we see through our object, we can also select through our object. Over to the right of the X-Ray button are our different shading modes. And so far in this course, we've only looked at our objects in solid view, but we also have material preview and rendered view, which we'll talk a lot about more in a later video. For now though, I wanna focus on the one on the far left, which is wireframe view. When you switch to wireframe, then X-Ray is going to be on by default, and now we're only seeing the wires of our objects and not the solid faces. Since X-Ray view is almost always on in wireframe view, then this is a great way to select through our objects. And this works great in object mode as well. For example, if I'm still in wireframe view and I hit Shift A, and I go to add a mesh and an icosphere, and I'll scale that down so that it's inside my cube, I can easily select it just by selecting one of the wires of the icosphere. However, if I were in solid view, it would take a couple clicks to get there, even if I had X-Ray turned on. It's actually so common to switch between the different shading modes, specifically because of how it impacts selection, that like most things in Blender, there's a hotkey for it which in this case is Z. Hit Z and you'll get a pie menu of the different shading modes, and you can swipe left to go to wireframe view or swipe right to go to solid view. So when I'm in edit mode, if I want to select through my object, what I'll do is hit Z, go to wireframe view, make my selection and do my operation. And then whenever I'm ready, I'll hit Z again and go back to solid view. Up in the 3D view header next to our X-ray toggle is our overlays toggle. Overlays are everything in the 3D viewport that's not geometry and not interactive. You can customize all of the general overlays in this first drop-down menu, and we looked at this briefly before when I showed you how to change the scale of the grid. But you can turn that off completely, or any of these other effects. Over in the menu next to that are all of the edit mode specific overlays. But to turn them all off, just use this toggle. Over to the left of that we have our gizmos toggle which are all of the interactive things that we can grab and manipulate in the 3D view. For example, the navigation gizmo in the top right, or the arrows in our move tool. If we don't want to see any of these, then we can just disable gizmos. And just to the left of that, we have a menu for enabling selection and visibility for the different types of objects in our viewport. So I'll go to object mode here, and if I didn't want to see any cameras, then I could just hide all of them here. Or if I didn't want to be able to select any lights, then I can turn selection off here. I'll still be able to see them, but they won't get in the way of me selecting my geometry. Now, I don't use this menu all that often because we can also do this on a per object basis over in the outliner. If I wanted to hide my cube, all I need to do is go to my outliner and click on this little eye icon. Now it's hidden and I can see the icosphere underneath. To unhide something, I'll just click on that again. I can also do this directly in the 3D viewport by going to Object, Show Hide, and Hide Selected, or use the hotkey H. To unhide, we can go to Show Hide and choose Show Hidden Objects, or use the hotkey Alt H. So again, that's select some objects, hit H to hide, or hit Alt H to unhide. Just be aware that hiding something in the 3D viewport doesn't mean that it'll be hidden in the render. We'll talk about rendering in a later video, but just know that that's what this camera icon is for. Then if you turn that off, then this object won't be rendered, even though you can still see it in the viewport. We can also change the selectability of each object, but that row of icons isn't on by default. For that, we need to go over to the outliner filter options, and turn on the restriction toggle column for the selection, and let's also do it for this monitor icon, which is enable and disable in viewport. So with this selection toggle, I can turn it off specifically for the cube, 
and that way I can easily select my icosphere underneath. Now the monitor icon, which is for enable or disable in viewport, initially looks like it does the same thing as the eye icon. But even though they're similar, they're actually two different systems. There are a lot of advanced use cases for the monitor icon, which I won't get into now, but you can think of it as a stronger version of the eye icon. For example, there's some objects that I don't want to get in the way a majority of the time. So for that, I'll use the monitor icon and disable it in the viewport. Now I can go about working and I can use H to hide my different objects and I can use Alt H to unhide them. And that entire time, my cube remains hidden. The reason I'm mentioning this is that it trips up beginners all the time when they open up a file or somehow accidentally disable something in the viewport, but the restriction toggle for it isn't on, so you can't even see it. It just looks like the object is grayed out and you can't find it. This can be incredibly confusing if you don't know what's going on. So if you have an object that's grayed out and you're not able to see it in the viewport, the way to fix it is to go to the filter menu, turn on the monitor icon, and make sure that that's checked. Another interesting feature of Blender that has to do with visibility is the ability to solo an object. For example, if I wanted to work on this icosphere and not worry about the cube or any of the other objects, then I could go into what's called local view. For that, I'll go to the view menu, down to local view, and turn on toggle local view. Or I can use the slash key on my number pad. With that on, now this looks like it's the only object in the scene. But the hint that I'm in local view is up here in the top left. This works independently of the hiding and unhiding system, so I can still hide things and unhide them here, and I'm still in local view for just this object. To exit, I can either toggle it in the menu again or hit slash on my number pad. It's really great for when you need to focus on one detail at a time. Sometimes though, you'll want to control visibility for whole groups of objects at the same time. So to demonstrate that, I'll take my cube here, and I'll hit shift D and duplicate this a couple times. Then over in the outliner, you'll see that up at the top, we have something called the scene collection, which contains everything in this particular scene. Underneath that, we have a collection simply called collection, and all of our objects are inside of that. But we can make as many collections as we want and organize them however we need to. For example, I can double click on this and call it meshes. And then I can also create a new collection for everything that's not a mesh. For my camera and my light, I'll create a new collection by clicking the new collection icon in the top right of the outliner, or by right clicking the outliner and choosing new collection. This one I'll call rendering. And it placed it inside the meshes collection because that's the one that I had clicked on last and it was active, but I can just drag and drop that into the scene collection and that'll pop it out of meshes. Now I can take my camera and I can shift select my light and I can drag those into the rendering collection. Now I can toggle visibility or selection or enable or disable in viewport for the whole collection at the same time. Collections also have this checkbox, which enable you to completely turn off everything all at once. I mentioned before that there is an idea of an active collection, but to be honest, it's very subtle. Right now, you'll see that the scene collection has a little outline around it, and that's the indicator that it's the active collection. So new collections will be added to that, as well as new objects. So if I hit Shift A and add an icosphere, then it just got added to my scene collection. However, if I choose my meshes collection, Shift A and add an icosphere, then that's where it's going to be added. So if you add a new object and you can't find it in the outliner, check your active collection. Also, a good hotkey to know when you're working with a bunch of collections is that you can always press period on the number pad, and that'll jump you right to your selected object. We talked about that hotkey in the 3D view when it comes to view and frame selected, but that same hotkey works all the way throughout Blender, even in the outliner. The interesting thing about collections is that you can nest them however you want. So we could have a new collection here, and I'll call this cubes, and I can put this inside the meshes collection and take all of my cube objects. I'll just shift select that whole list, place them in the cube collection, and now I can manage all of my cubes at the same time. What's also interesting is that I can have objects in multiple collections. To do that, instead of moving something to a different collection by dragging and dropping it, we want to link it to a different collection. So I can left click and drag and drop, but then before I drop, notice the tooltip says I can hold control to link. So I'll hold down control and then let go with my mouse. And now I've linked that to the meshes collection. So it's both in cubes and in meshes. If I hide my cubes, then it'll still be visible because the meshes collection is still visible. So this can get a little mind bending if you do a bunch of crazy linking. So for now, I'd recommend leaving things in just one collection. To remove something from a collection, you can just right click and choose unlink. You can also move and link things between collections right in the 3D viewport by going to the object menu, down to collection, and choose move to collection or link to collection. The hotkey for those are M and shift M. So with M, I can move it from cubes to meshes, again with the hotkey M, or I can use the hotkey shift M and add it to meshes as well. If I use M to move, then it'll only put it in the target collection and remove it from the other collections. 
If you want to select all the objects in the collection, just go to the collection, right click, and choose Select Objects. If you want to delete a collection, then you can just hit the Delete key, the X key, or right click and choose Delete. That's not going to delete the objects inside of it though, just the collection itself. If you want to delete the collection and everything inside of it, then right click and choose Delete Hierarchy instead. If you're coming from another software and you're used to working with groups rather than collections, then this may take some time to get used to, especially since collections don't really exist in the 3D scene, and clicking on it doesn't select all of your objects. If you want something that works a little bit more like groups, then what you can do is hit Shift A and go down to Empty, and let's just add a plain axis. An empty object is just an object that doesn't have any geometry information inside of it, and in the outliner I'll call this cubes, the same name as my collection, and then I'll take all of my cubes, I'll shift select that whole list, and then I'll hold down shift in order to parent it to this cubes empty. Now when I select this empty, I can move all of my cubes around as a whole. I realize that this doesn't give you the exact same functionality, but between parenting and collections, you should be able to do everything that you need to. Okay, one last cool thing about collections is that you can instance them. For that, just go to Shift A, go down to where it says Collection Instance, and choose any of these collections. In this case, I'll choose Cube, and it's placed the instance directly on top of the originals, so I'll hit G and I'll move this off to the side. I can rotate this and scale it however I want. I can hit Shift D to duplicate it, all while keeping a reference to the original cubes. And when I change one of these cubes, the others are instantly updated. We talked about instancing objects in a previous lesson, but with this, you can also instance whole collections. All right, I ran through a lot of info there when it comes to working with collections, but if you're just starting out, all I want you to do is practice using them to organize your objects. Also practice switching between wireframe view and solid shaded view, and hiding and unhiding. Once you've got that, then you're ready for the next lesson. <laughs>